All right, we now have another keynote uh, from Tim Davis, who is Executive Director of Data and AI Architecture at IBM. Many of you know him really well. He was at, um, he's been at IBM for 18 plus years. IBM acquired his company Accentual Software, which became the Infosphere brand inside IBM. And he's now CTO and Executive Director for Distinguished Engineers, which has got to be one of the great titles in the business. He's focused on data management, data science, AI, and journey to cloud. Yeah, and we're really we're looking forward to hearing from you, Tim Davis. All right, is there a clicker? Oh, right here. Great, uh, it's great to be here, great to see all of you, and uh, I know I've worked with a lot of you in the past. Um, and you know, today, uh, what I really wanted to do was really talk about um, where we're going in the industry and what the future is for data and AI and CDOs in particular. Um, I think the, you know, the, the first thing, you know, first a little bit about me. I mean, I came kind of out of the banking industry, financial markets, I worked in Wall Street for you know 20 years. Um, I was uh, head of risk and compliance at Fidelity Investments, all this stuff. <clears throat> and back then, in the early days, it was like the foundations of data. And uh, I left Wall Street because we didn't have any tools. And it was all hand coding and everything else. And I was like, we got to create some tools to be successful here. So. Um, formed a company uh, that created some of the early uh, data integration tools and all that, and ultimately IBM acquired us, and uh, that became the Infosphere brand. And we've kind of carried that forward to Watson X and all the other things that we're, you know, that we're coming, uh, you know, coming out with now. And you know, I think the thing that I've, uh, you know, and I've I've worked in as a chief data officer. I've went around in terms of. Um, how we actually progress the tooling and become successful and make people successful in the marketplace and then really started diving into artificial intelligence and generative AI uh, over the past few years. And the thing that I've, you know, I've found while doing that is that you know, the big problem with generative AI right now that we're going to get into and the big problem with analytics is the data. So I, it, so I went from like CDO to chief analytics officer, and then and I'm finding myself going back to my roots again. Like the laws of data physics still apply, and uh, and really looking at it from that way. And how do you, you know, how do you do that? How do you, we've got to converge um, applications, and we've got to converge what we've been doing when we can call it data fabric or open data fabrics. Well, we've got to bring those together because you're your really application of generative AI is in the apps, in app modernization. And where's all the data still? We still got you know, three quarters of data sitting in mainframes, running mainframe apps in a lot of the big enterprises. And in order to produce analytics, produce AI, you have to produce it from a, a, uh, an application perspective and how it's being consumed. And what does that do? Okay, it's going to drag all the data foundation forward to be able to do that. It's also going to change the organization or organizational dynamics that we've all been talking about here. Now, all the talks I have with chief data officers, you know, I talk with a lot of you, and I probably talk with 150, 200 CDOs you know, every year, and what, what's in the minds of CDOs? You know, what I've seen is, you know, either deer in the headlights or fear, or, uh, um, you know, I often say, uh, you know, C, you know CDO, CDOs, uh, oh, you know, kind of operate in a, an environment where, you know, their, their expectations are so high for them right now, and they live quiet lives of desperation. You know, and a, and a lot of them, and a lot of you know what I'm talking about, right? Because you've got to reset a lot of times the whole organization. And I and I spent a lot of my time in the field working with uh, enterprises to really convince the upper management, convince all the executives, a lot of business executives, getting sponsorship so that you can make progress going forward. And this is what happens: we end up having to converge applications and. Uh, and the data foundation and rebuild it. And so over the, the past few years, uh, I've been working with a lot of organizations, including the EDM Council, including uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of our 
uh, competitors like AWS and, and Google and Microsoft and all of these, and really putting together advanced methodologies for how we can actually incorporate it. And it brings us to a convergence of classic data governance, which all of you are very familiar with, with AI governance, which is kind of a new emerging capability, uh, with generative AI. And you know, when you, when you look at it intrinsically, how do you, how do you carry, just in this example, a data lineage through, uh, through your data, through AI governance, and through generative AI? Well, guess what? You kind of stop at the point where you, get to, where you get to AI governance, because now you're talking about how do I put a lineage through a neural network and other things, right? So we have to have other methods of doing it. So we've now created a data foundation and a capability of doing that um, you know, to, to bring it forward. And you know, I, I want to stress the, the importance of an open data fabric, because the, the data fabric has kind of taken on new, new meanings. Because not only have we gone through a process of modernizing traditional data governance, but we're now at a point where we're integrating that with AI governance, model management, and the ability to deploy AI models, which we've, uh, many of us have now had experience doing for the past three to five years, where we're able to distribute models across the enterprise and run them in production and control bias, control things like privacy security. But now we have a new challenge, which is generative AI. What does generative AI do? It consumes everything you give it and creates a, an environment of decisions. And what's happened in the industry? How many people have used ChatGPT? Everybody, right? And what's happened with ChatGPT? It's created some real crises in the industry because it's a huge data breach, the public version of it. And so everyone's now starting to move to a private environment around this to be able to be successful doing it. Um, let me look at the data breach from Samsung and other you know, highly publicized uh, environments. So data security, privacy become critical and then controlling that generative AI framework in a private type environment. And how do you do that? By feeding it corpuses of data that you can control. And that's the, you know, kind of the, the core. The other thing that is critical and is representative of your enterprises is where is your data? You know, I work with a lot of international, multinational uh, enterprises, and they have data all, literally all over the world. And each, but even if you're just in the US or you're just in a, in a lower geography, every geopolitical boundary you cross has different rules and regulations. And, uh, and from my regulatory compliance days and risk management days, we have to comply with this. So what does this mean? It means where is data domiciled? How is that data consumed and who has access to it? How do we control rules and policy enforcement across this kind of a distributed landscape? And it, it's critical, and this, you know, to me is one of the most important slides that I'm gonna show you today, which is really a discussion around a distributed data topology, because data is not one thing. And we went for years from uh, you know, data lakes and data warehouses where we're putting everything in one big tank in one place to, uh, you know, to, and Hadoop came along and what was the Hadoop mantra? Put everything into Hadoop and something beautiful will happen, right? And what, and what happened, right? What happened was we ended up with this big data hairball. You know, I've, I have cats, so I kind of relate to that. But you end up with this huge mess and the reality is you're in a distributed enterprise. And so we've got to deal with manage distributed data. Likewise, your governance programs, both data governance, AI governance, need to support a distributed data topology. And you need to understand this map for your enterprise so that you can successfully deal with it. The other is, you know, we're talking people, process, and technology where um, when you talk about a distributed data topology, you're talking about you know, where is my data domiciled, how is it controlled, again, how is access point? And so you, you want to have a self-service analytic capability with catalogs and all this, bringing forward everything we've just talked about 
and be able to then manage things like data privacy. So you might be doing data masking, you might be doing data anonymization and, and, uh, and, and rolling forward like that. And we have now a methodology as well as a method for doing this and for automating that entire cycle. And this is where I'll introduce the concept of a data steward robot because we no longer want people managing it. So if you're doing manual, you know, classic governance in a manual way, we want to be able to bring that forward and automate all of that. And so we're dealing with a data pipeline, enforcing rules and policies, as well as the ability to then integrate this with not only a knowledge catalog, but also an AI governance environment so that you're able to manage and do model management and model deployment. Then, taking that forward now into uh, generative AI, where we've got to really take those capabilities and be able to manage the corpuses of data that you're ingesting so that you can get trusted information out. And the trust of information is really the, you know, the outflow, this is kind of an eye chart, but it's, it really represents kind of the, the foundation of generative AI and what we need to, you know, what we need to be doing. Um, I'm going to flip through some of these quickly, but um, integrating, you know, then data fabric with principles of privacy and protection. And we're going to talk a little bit about this in the panel uh, that's coming up next, but data security and data privacy and data governance and AI governance now converge. These are one practice. Now, they're not distributed different in different things like they used to be. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that a little bit today and how you bring that together to, uh, to allow you to do that. <clears throat> data management, governance, compliance, and data security, like I said, come together. And the, the methodologies uh, are something we practice in the field. And I feel very confident now because we've done enough of these that we, re we really can really help fundamentally change our enterprise. And this is where I, you know, I want to engage with all of you, obviously, to, uh, you know, to talk about that. <laughs> the other area, uh, again, I don't have a lot of time to talk about this today, is test data management and synthetic data generation. Being able to create synthetic people, synthetic data, synthetic environments is very possible now. So you can actually get to an environment where you're safe and you have trusted information within these corpuses of data that you're gonna be, that you're gonna be ingesting. And so, um, you know, kind of the, the, uh, the last part of what I was gonna talk about is the methodology, right? And obviously, you know, we're IBM, we have Watson X, uh, which has a number of components to it, but it really is part of an open data uh, fabric, data framework. And so, you know, it works with Snowflake, it works with, you know, any other, you know, third party, third party vendor as part of this. And it's <clears throat> the discussion I, that I want to have is on the capabilities you need to be successful looking at those applications and then how do we get trusted information coming out of your generative AI environments. And this is just kind of a model I usually draw on a, you know, on a, on a chalkboard. <clears throat> this is an example of putting all that together into, uh, into a look across your lines of business. And this is often what we use in the format of how we engage and help lay out roadmaps to make you successful. Because, you know, living a quiet life of desperation as a CDO is not what I want you to do, right? I want you to be wildly successful and get you on a path where you can be successful. And the reason all of you are going to be chief analytics officers, like Dave said, I mean, th this is the foundation of the house. You know, you're, you're the only ones that can really build this house. It's not going to come from a bunch of data scientists doing fancy data science models and things uh, because it's the data that gets you there. And so with, with that, I want to, I want to uh, ask Kelly Mattis to come up and just say a couple of words. She's one of our uh, most trusted uh, partners in the field and has done so many implementations like successfully. I can't think about it, so I just wanted to say a few words. Thank you, Tim. Thanks. Dave, I want to say that we share the affinity for the moon. I live on the ocean in New Hampshire, and every month I have a full moon party. And I've got pictures. My social hey, media, i got to come to that. My social media picture is me <laughs> holding the moon. So, you know, the thing with 
any implementation, and Gen AI, of course, is where the, the world is going, has three fundamentals to it. And that's the people that are doing the implementation, the process, the methodology we're using, and the technology. And of course, now it's so important that we have data protection, we have automation, we have security to protect that data and have rules that govern that. From a technology perspective, it really doesn't matter what cloud you're on, what you're using, what the applications are that are feeding it. What matters is that the data is still good. And it's just so interesting that it's still a topic of conversation that Sol and I worked on you know, 12 years ago to have data be sound going into an ERP solution. So regardless of what, act, what technology you're using, what matters most is the methodology and how you're doing it. So around the processes, we're working with IBM and partnering with the EDM Council on utilizing that methodology, which I think is their way of the future. Clearly, other companies are still using agile methodology. They're using waterfall. They're using standard PPM. We have skilled resources across all of these methodologies and working on getting certified in the EDM Council methodology. So what we've learned in a lot of our data and AI engagements, obviously, we all know the topic is lack of data privacy, lack of data security and lack of effective information. The key of latency of information is huge now where people want everything real time at the snap of a finger. Best for last here, it's really all about the people. Your implementation would be successful if you have the people with the skills, both technical and soft skills, and that they're communicating. Communication is as key to an implementation as location is to real estate. So we have experience in data management and generative AI. We have program management methodology across all of those methodologies I shared with you. Highly skilled resources that are both onshore and offshore, remote, and will still go on site today. Most people don't want to, but we have folks that do. And maintaining those relationships is key, not only with the likes of our business partners, but our clients, and really, most importantly, our consultants and practitioners that are doing the work. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are on the ground learning about the customer's problems, creating use cases to solve them, and understanding what technologies they can use and methodologies to ensure success of that implementation. So we have the most competitive rates in the services industry. We've brought our key members of our team here today. I'd love to chat with you more about some of the implementations and the success stories we've had at multiple clients, most of them Fortune 50 companies. So please come meet with us and we can talk more about that at our networking table. We have our founder here, we have our VP of Data and AI Strategies, and Steve Kerr, who's our technical lead, who can find anybody anytime within 24 hours, guaranteed. So thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Great, thanks. <clears> Thank <throat>